some deep, they, you know, make sure it was engineered and erected properly. And it's sturdy. But when I look over and look down, I'm fearful because I, there's, a, there's a function that I'm going to go overboard and fall into the water. There's a cliff that falls upon me with this with nausea that I'm going to fall down to my death, right? Like, it's, it's extreme. It's really extreme. And I'm not sure what I just feel like when it's the fear of sight, I mean, when it's the fear of crime or, like, arachnophobia or any of these other phobias, but I know that fear can bind you and restrict you in ways you never imagine. And think about it when it connects to ministry. Why are we fearful? Because we've never done it before, because we um, don't want to mess up, because we um, don't want others to laugh at us or talk about us, and that's because we don't want to stumble over our words, we don't feel like there's no good enough or worthy enough to do it, you know, whatever the reason is, we have. There's a fear that is rippling, crippling the kingdom. There's a fear that is crippling the kingdom and going forth and doing whatever it is that the Lord has asked you to do. Right? But because we're a spirit in a body, really the Lord can in our spirit to take our body to where we've never been. So now our body is what's fearful of what our spirit's called to do. I'm going to say it again. We're the spirit in a body. The Lord commands our spirit to do what it is he's called us to do. But it's our body that becomes fearful of what we've been asked. What our spirit's going to ask to do. Our body is the one that takes on the symptoms and the extremities, right? That's what really takes on the fear. So when you go up, let's say, preach the word of God for the first time or even to teach, Teaching is a little bit less, you know. It's a little bit less fearful. Let's say you go to teach the word of God for the first time. And you're nervous, and book study, going through chairs, and shuffling papers, and figuring, and, you know, you're going to have to talk to necessarily clear, because you are nervous, and you get into the it's the same way to what I have to deal with the bridge. But the difference now, right? That was really when I was younger. I don't I can tell you today because what I, I did as I grew and I got older and matured and I got mature, um when I go to places that would signify when I go to places that I look out and up, right? Because if you're looking out and up, you're looking farther and you're not looking straight down in front of you. But you change your perspective to align with the horizon. You change your perspective to align with what's above and not beneath. You change your perspective to being the head 
and not the tail, right? You change your perspective. So now I'm on the bridge, and I'm looking up above, and I'm seeing, instead of me seeing straight down with the water or the bottoms of the mountain, I see the tops of the mountain, and I see the star, I see the sun, I see, you know, the beautiful colors that it makes when the clouds come in, especially like with the sun is setting. I see this whole other picture, this whole other view in the same location that I'm standing in, that I was fearful of. How can we change our viewpoint so that we are not fearful to do the work that God has called us to do? My God, how can we change our perspective so that we can walk in obedience to what the Lord has called us to do? Isaiah 8 talks about, um, where is it? Verse 12 in chapter 8, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 12. It says, do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall honor as holy. Let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. It says, do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. The Lord of hosts, him you shall honor as holy. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. You should fear the Lord and not fear the assignment. You should fear the Lord and not fear people. Fear the Lord and not fear the gift. Because they empower you to operate with power and the gifts for the assignment, for the call, for anything that the Lord has called you to do. How are you to operate with the anointing, with the oil? If you fail for it. I'll never forget. I think I, I, I came back to church in 2015. In 2014, I was visiting. Before that, I was, like, visiting here and there, but not really taking anything serious, right? But then in 2014, I started trying to actually find something. And then I, in, like, late part of the year, like, October, I found something that was actually in walking distance from where I was staying at the time. And I went there for maybe three months. No. I went there for, like, two months straight. And I was like, wow, this is really good. You know, there's a black pastor, black female pastor. You know, this is really different than what I'm accustomed to seeing, like what I grew up seeing. And I was just like, this is really good. I don't know. Something feels right. You know, and the Lord was also calling me back to church through dance. So that's a whole other topic on a whole other day. And I joined the church in like, January of 2015, you know, the Lord moved my feet and walked me up there when they did the altar call. And I want to say that was January 2015. January 2016, I was asked to join, like, the women's ministry. By April, at our first event, I was teaching like, we had breakout sessions, and I was one of the facilitators. And it's funny because, you know, as the leader at the time of leading the ministry was asking for topics for these breakout sessions, you know, I was, boom, here's the question. Here's another one. Boom, here's another one. And everybody was loving it, loving it. They were like, what are we going to teach? Excuse me? Teach what? I just got here. Hey, give me a break. Can I just get my feet wet? What do you mean? I don't even know what I'm talking about. Like, what am I really saying? What would I be saying? I don't have to talk to you guys. I don't know. 
And literally, the, she was like, no, which you were trying to do. And I told her, I said, okay, all right. I chose one. And I found the Bible scriptures. And all of a sudden, it turned into the Lord gave me like a game that we can play to kind of like like an icebreaker. He gave us scriptures. And as I, as we did the game, it led right into starting the, the uh, workshop. Like it, it eased the way into it, the, the breakout session. And then it led into me sharing some testimony in four different ways. Because you have to do a workshop four times, people have to rotate them. And everyone just kept coming up to me and was like, I'm so blessed for what you talked today. And I was just, I'm still in the stand and I'm like, if you guys only knew, I was sweating. Oh, it. Standing up there, sweating, but especially because Pastor had to be in each one of our workshops, I was just sweating bullets. Like, voice was quivering, everything was happening. And at the time, it wasn't even for me, it wasn't even about, okay, trusting God and letting Him run the workshop missing. It was just the same thing, you got to get through this, right? And what are you going to do? And the Lord was faithful, and he helped me through it. I don't even know what, at the time, I didn't know what he was calling me to do or where he was calling me to go, but it was a help in helping the next step, right? But if I was so fearful and not so concerned, just the same way I got on the bridge when I was younger, and I'd be so sick and overwhelmed with looking down, if I kept looking down, I wouldn't have got up and I wouldn't have known what I was capable of doing or what the spirit was capable of using me for, I should say, right? But I looked above and I looked and I kept my head up and changed my perspective instead of going, oh, God, I can't do this. I don't want to give this to me. And I'll never forget, I didn't have nothing. This is now Friday night before the Saturday workshop. I had nothing, okay? One in the morning. And I was up one in the morning. That nothing. And it was all of a sudden, at the time I would think all of a sudden, right? But really it's the Holy Spirit. I got all these scriptures, boom, 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 boom. Where am I even reading the Bible fluently like that? But I start researching and I'm getting scriptures and I'm pulling, boom, 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 and I'm pulling and I'm pulling, right? And by 2 a.m., in an hour, I had everything that I needed. I had already ordered like, the stuff that I needed, but like, the actual words I was going to say, I had no idea what direction I was going in. But I just pulled a whole bunch of scriptures, and it was really like last minute. The rule remained faithful. He was with me. He says he would be with me. He would never leave you or take you. So while we fearful, one Lord has asked us to do something. Do we not know the word of God or do we not believe and trust in the word of God? Fear not, my child. Fear not. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. Fear confuses us to the point that it, it cripples us, it hinders us from doing what it is we think have to do or assigned to do. And we as Christians have to break out of that. Changing our perspective gives us a whole nother <clears throat> gives us a whole nother arena to look at. It's a whole different viewpoint. It's a different picture that's being painted. When that happens, we have to look to the hills from whence cometh our help and know that our help comes from him. The Lord is a faithful God. So Father, we just want to come this morning praying for the spirit of doom. 
right? As you are gracious, you are worthy and masterful. Father, for you are the light that dispels darkness, that you are a glory time, God, that you are worthy of honor and praise, worthy constantly for being a mountain shifter, for being, like God, the lily in the valley, for being that bright and morning star. God, we worship you this morning. We extol your holy name this morning. We exalt you, O oh God. We thank you and we glorify you, Lord God. Lord, that you are our counselor. You are, O oh God, the God that gives us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Father, you are the one that endows power to us, O oh God. We thank you this morning, God. We glorify you. Father, we know that you are worthy, for you are Alpha and Omega. God, you know the beginning from the end. You even knew us before we were even in our mother's womb, Lord God. And we thank you for being the creator, for creating us, O oh God, this morning. We thank you. Lord God, we worship you and we bring before you, O oh God, our hearts this morning. Our will this morning, our minds this morning, oh God, and our fears this morning, we bring them before you, Father God. Lord, we ask that you would cleanse us and make us whole this morning, purify our hearts, our thought life, oh God, sanctify us, Father. Forgive us of the words and the actions that we may have spoken that were unclean and unpleasing unto you. Oh God, that we would. Be cleansed with hyssop, O God, and made as white as snow. Create us a clean heart, O God, this one we are. Father, we come before you, leaving our fears at the feet of the throne. Father, rebuking the spirit of fear that comes to bind us and to hinder us. Lord God, you have already ordered our steps. You continue to be that light unto our feet and that lamp, that lamp unto our feet and the light unto our pathway. God, and we thank you for that. But, Father, there are times where we, we are fearful because it may be our first time or we may operate in the flesh, my God. But, God, we ask that you would come and arrest the spirit of fear on today, oh God. Destroy what it is that is controlling us, oh God, and blocking us from going forward in the assignment that you've told us to. Father, for you have called us to deliver many, you have called us to preach the word to many, but you have called us to prophesy, oh God, to save lives of many. You may have called us to lay our hands, oh God, to bring about healing. You may call us to be different things, Lord God, but we bind the spirit of fear that comes to hinder us, that comes, oh God, so that people won't receive their blessing, that comes, oh God, to bless others from receiving their glory. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we would operate in the freedom that we already have. We are no longer bound. We are no longer captive. But we are set free by Jesus Christ this morning. We thank you today, Father, that there's a renewing in our minds, there's a transformation that's happening in our minds, oh God, that our perspectives are changing, that our outlook is changing. Oh God, that we are looking up and not beneath, oh God, Father, that we are looking to you and that you would be with us, that you would resonate your spirit in us, oh God, that you would operate through us, oh God, that we would not operate in flesh. Father, God, we consistently hear from you. We would consistently hear from you, Lord God, knowing that you are with us, that you are the one that is using us, oh God, as a vessel. Empty out us, oh God, and fill us up with you. Empty us out and fill us up with you, oh God, we ask this morning, we worship you and we magnify your holy and precious name, God, for you are worthy of the praise, you are worthy of the glory and the honor, oh God, we thank you today. Father, we thank you that fear would never, oh God, bind us or be a stumbling stone. Father, that we would speak to fear and it shall move, oh God, just as we are able to speak to mountains and they would move, we would speak to fear. And it shall be moved, Father. You did not give us the spirit of fear, but you gave us love, power, and a sound mind, oh God. Father, you created space in us to carry love, to carry the power, oh God, and you gave us a sound mind. Father, we rebuke and we come against anxiety, other forms of fear. We come against anxiety. 
society this morning, oh God. You said to be anxious for nothing but through prayer, thanksgiving, and supplication that we should make our requests known unto you. Father, and we thank you that we would not operate in the spirit of fear. We thank you that we would not operate with anxiety. We thank you, oh God, but we would pull those things to the core and leave them back on Calvary, oh God, where you sent on all of these things for us already. Father God, we thank you that we would come in like a mighty Russian when we would come in with a spirit of boldness, that we would come in, oh God, in courage and in truth, oh God, we would come in just like we did in the upper room. And we would come in as a force to be reckoned with. Whatever the assignment you are given us, we would come in as a force to be reckoned with, oh God. Father, that we would not doubt, we would not waver, but if we stand firm on the word of God, standing firm on what it is you have told us, standing firm on your direction, standing firm on where you want us to go, Lord God, we thank you this morning. Cover our minds under the blood of Jesus, cover our hearts, our physical beings, oh God, with the blood of Jesus this morning, we thank you. God, that our thoughts are yours. We thank you that our hearts are yours, our will is yours, that we operate not by our own understanding, but it's through you, O oh God. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day that you have given us, O oh God. We thank you that as we go out, that we are protected and guided by you, that your angels are camp on about each and every one of them, that we are robed in the armor of God, Father, from the helmet of some. From the helmet of salvation, O oh God, and the breastplate of righteousness, the front of truth that girds our loins. Father, shouting our feet in the gospel of peace, carrying that shield of faith, the front fiery dart. Lord God, and having the word of God, which is sharper than any double edged sword. We thank you this morning, God, that you are forever with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. And this morning to the Lord's Prayer. Be fearful for nothing. Be fearful for nothing. Be fearful for nothing. God did not give you a spirit of fear. He gave you love, power, and a sound mind. Go forth and do the task that He has asked you to do. Be fearful of nothing. Have a blessed and a wonderful day.